Hi there. This is a, a brief introduction to taxonomy of algae for the purposes of the labs and identification, mainly just to give you an idea of what to look for in the major groups. Um, algae is a group that's not really uh, solid phylogenetically. It's defined as non-vascular oxygenic photosynthesizing organisms with no sterile covering over their gametangia, except for in the caryophytes. It includes bacteria and several widely divergent groups of protists. So the cyanobacteria aren't on this. This is the eukaryotic um, tree as it stands fairly recently. And the green algae in the upper left, all those things are mostly considered, and red algae are considered algae, except for the land plants. But then you can see with those blue arrows, there's other places around um, different groups. Um, why the divergent groups that are considered algae, and we'll see these in some of the upcoming slides. Oftentimes what the taxonomic uh, method is for determining what, what different groups are is based on um, the dominant pigments, their cell wall composition, and some of their habitats. And these are some of the groups, and this is just a, a table from Freshwater Ecology book sort of giving you an idea of the relative diversity of the different groups of algae and some of the ecological importance as well. And we'll talk about each of these groups as we go through. Um, this link is a relatively good uh, online key for identification of, of algae. And there are several there that you can find online if you Google them. Um, there's a good one on Western diatoms from, um, for diatoms, which we'll get to. So the first group is the cyanobacteria, and they are bacterial, so they don't have nucleus. Um, but they're some of the most uh, advanced bacteria, if you want to, morphologically variable. They can go from single cells and look just like bacteria to mixed cell types and single cells to colonies. And this is an example of one that has single cells, yet it's arranged in um, regular sheets, Marismopedia. And again, you can see there's no clear chloroplast in there or, or nucleus. It also has this blue-green color, and that's because of the pigments, and that's something that will help you set it aside. This one's called anabina, um, and it's got a heterocyst, which is a nitrogen-fixing cell in the center of this uh, nice S-shaped uh, series of cells that are connected together. This is nostoc, it's another heterocyst, this one. And uh, it can grow uh, in terrestrial habitats and, and re-wet, and it's fairly tough. And then you can see this dark blue-green color on the right, um, and then the lighter blue-green color on the left, but still an, an indicating uh, color. Oscillatoria is one that um, is common benthic, and also it's um, we can find it in some lakes around here in Kansas. The uh, cells actually glide on solid surfaces and they, they do so in sort of a, a spiral method. So you'd see them moving around on your slide if you if this was a live preparation. Microcystis, this forms um, colonies of individual cells inside of a gel. Um, this one's really important because it's a toxic cyanobacterium and it blooms commonly all throughout the world and causes problems. The next group I'll talk about is the green algae, the chlorophyte. Fights. And I don't have these in a particular order because, as you saw from the taxonomy, it's kind of difficult to order them. They can be in single to multiple cells, uh, they can be single to multinucleate, and they can have quite complex cell forms in some groups. So Chlamydomonas would be uh, a simple one, and that can be single cells. Now this can be difficult because there's other things that are uh, make colonies, but when they come in contact with, with uh, predators, they'll make a big colony, but when they're not, and when they're in culture, they'll go way back to single cells. Here's a green alga that's common throughout the world, um, Cladophora. And it also illustrates so that there's some, some difficulties because if you take the Cladophora that's branched like the one in the, in the upper right hand side of the slide um, and grow it in uh, growth media in still water, it won't branch anymore. And so you'll get something that looks more like what's called rhizoclonium. So a lot of times the genetic methods end up being the final thing to, to determine these. So we can illustrate some of the diversity in the green algae with the one group of green algae, the Desmonds, um, just the idea of how much of variation in form there is in these. So one of them is Clostarium, and we see there's several different phases of uh, reproduction associated with this and different 
uh, species in the genus uh, are long and narrow or shorter and fatter. Desmidium is a series of connected ones, cells. Cosmarium is probably the simplest one. The astrum, you can see there's a little bit more variation in the outline of the cell, and all these will be things that will give you uh, keys on what the genus is. Star astrum, uh, another desmid, green algae, and you can see all these have that sort of nice grassy green color to them, um, and somewhat will look different from the cyanobacteria because of that. Caraceum, um, that this one happens to be growing on Codophora, which we saw earlier. It's it's a uh, it's an epiphyte on on an al another alga. And in one genus, there's a lot of variation in this macrosterius. The one down the bottom center is is dividing into into two new cells. Natrium, uh, again, simple like Clostridium. Pediastrum, one of my favorites with microsterius, very pretty one. Pleurotanium, uh, Zygnema maybe, or something related to it. So we get this filamentous thing. And spherocystis, very simple cells. Tetraspora. Next group is a diatome or the bacillary of Phycee. They're very important primary producers in freshwaters and marines. And the glass frustules are what set them apart. They've got these two, two pieces that fit together and have quite variable growth forms. So this one just illustrates that the in the bottom, how it's kind of like a petri dish that you have two halves that fit together like that. And they all have that. So from the side, the girdle view, it'll look rectangular, but from the top, the valve view, it'll, this particular type of diatom would, would look round. Again, draw tremendous variability. Cirrella is here. Fragilaria is one that's long and thin, and then the two pieces, long, thin pieces come together, and then each of the cells stays stuck together. And that's the one in the middle that looks like a ribbon. Cymbella is uh, a stalked diatome, so it would be attached onto a rock with that stalk that you can see coming off the side of it. And the other thing you can see from some of these is, is this looks a little green, but they kind of get this brownish reddish look to them. And that's because of their carotenoids. Coconese, and this is just an electron micrograph, um, but it's just a little sphere that sticks on, on things, solid surfaces like rocks and plant leaves. Maybe navicula. Um, and you can see these little holes. The reason they have holes is because they've got exchange with the um, water. In addition, um, this is a, a more important taxonomic characteristic. So, so the number and arrangement of the holes and those lines is important. Melisira is one that looks like barrels. So the pieces stick together and then each of the barrels sticks to the next barrel. So we have a chain that it makes. And this, this is pretty common in both lakes and in, in streams. Pinularia, it's a really long one. The one in the center is actually dividing. So you can see the girdle, the girdle view, the sort of rectangular look on the left. And then on the valve view, this one has a, a nice, you can see the little uh, stripes that, uh, that made, made by the holes that are in there. And then also this is a one that can glide. So some of these you'd put them on the slide and they'd be moving. And you can just see in the, in the one, the biggest image there, there's a real faint line down the center actually that is broken in the middle. And they use that to push themselves along the solid surfaces. Cirrella, another one. Tabularia, uh, kind of look like diatoms stuck together. And this is all girdle, girdle views from here. And Asterionella is really a common one in springtime in lakes, and it's, it's a little skinny one that stays attached together right on the ends, and then it kind of goes around the circle and makes that little star shape. There's also a dinobrium, which we'll talk about in a minute, which is not, not a um, diatome. Okay, dinobrium is a chrysophyte. This is really common late, in, um, late summer in lakes uh, because it can be this, these big agglomerations of cells are are able to swim up and down and get into the light when they need to or into the nutrients where they need to, but also they're big enough that they're resistant to being eaten by the zooplankton. And golden algae, um, Primnesium parvum is also a chrysophyte and um, it's not very distinct, but it's important because it can be quite toxic. Red algae, um, Polysiphonia, this is a red algae, and you can see they have that red, reddish color, and hence their name. Um, they're not extraordinarily common in freshwaters, but there is one, Protacospermin, the 
vet trachospermum that can be found in many, many streams around the world. And this is it, vet trachospermum. Um, the blue one is, is, uh, is just stained, so you can see it better, but you can get the sort of greenish look or even a reddish look to it, depending upon the pigmentation of it. And this is a pretty uh, complex morphological one with many cells that are, are together. Carophyce are the closest to the land plants. Uh, Cara, they're also called stoneworts because they precipitate calcium carbonate on the outside and, and they have a real grainy or rocky feeling to them. Um, and uh, you can see these all, all, all over the, um, oftentimes in lakes or ponds and we find them in cattle ponds and such. And that's the last of the major groups. So this will hopefully help you get started when you get into the keys and start looking. And if it says it's a green alga or blue green alga, you'll have or cyanobacteria, you'll have a, have an idea.